Hello, Kate. Hello. Red Rose. Yes. yes. We uh, we used to see graphic novels uh, as novels of um, uh, superheroes of some some kind uh, in uh, American tradition. Yes. First of all, and in uh, Japan yeah. tradition, uh, at second, uh, and uh, can you say if there is uh, some uh, European tradition of uh, graphic novels, and maybe uh, uh, what's the difference in approach? There's a strong tradition of graphic novels in France. Like I think one quarter of all books sold in France are in the graphic novel format. In England, very much not so. It's picture books are something for children, and the graphic novel format it's not very. It doesn't have a long history. Um, there is a long history of political cartoons, but usually one picture, not a sequential narrative. So it's very exciting to be part of a new British tradition of creating graphic novels for for the adult market for serious subjects. Mm -hmm. And I particularly enjoyed the opportunity to do this on a historical subject. I really liked the ability that I have with Red Rosa to create a book which has historical referencing, but it has you know action and drama like the graphic novel format. I think it, that's unique that you can do that with graphic novels. You can have something where you can find the historical source, but you can experience it in a dramatic way. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of humour. Of course, but there is a lot of humour in, in Dr. Luxemburg's life. She, she was always good for a, a quick, witty comeback. So, like, when I read Luxemburg's letters, there was already humour, passion, drama, and very serious academic and social messages in her work. So it was a pleasure to be able to create this character. But, but I'm not creating a character, I'm recreating the character mm -hmm. of someone who was very, very vibrant... Uh, very brave, uh, yeah, and very funny. Mm -hmm. uh, saying of uh, uh, cartoon tradition, uh, we can remember uh, punch cartoons uh, with um, uh, Uncle Sam, uh, yeah. with Russian beer. Uh, there is a Hollywood approach, mm -hmm. or um, so-called Hollywood, yeah. or uh, uh, American graphic novels, mm -hmm. where uh, the evil and the goodness are uh, somehow concentrated in one point and to uh, to make all things good you should uh, go to a volcano and throw the uh, ring <laughs> there or maybe you should uh, find uh, a big bad guy and uh, somehow him. defeat him and all will be fine because the world is uh, itself is good it is somehow corrupted by bad things, but you can find them and uh, remove them. And to make uh, this, you you have to find a superhero, which uh, maybe with uh, some help from his few friends, he will find the evil and defeat it. And you, as a ordinary man, you should only, you have uh, to hope that this superhero will, will appear. Uh, don't you think this is, um, uh, it is uh, oversimplified to a point uh, when it becomes a lie? There was a particular point you said there, uh, where the ordinary man sees these, these superheroes, these, these concentrated and simplistic rendition of the world as either good or evil. And it's also about power, about male power. Like, this is one of the, of the lessons, I think, of feminism, to liberate these men from this idea that they must always have more and more power and that they, you must use that power to act over others, particularly women. I mean, I don't have a man at the centre of my book. I have a woman. I show her with complexity, I show her in her historical reality. I do use good and evil in the book. It's quite, uh, it, it was very fun for me as a, as a cartoonist to be able to create a baddie, yeah? But it was one who has historical reality because Luxembourg is murdered and she's murdered by her own side. And so those, those politicians like Friedrich Hebert and, and Gustav Noska 
I do make them look evil and I do enjoy doing it and I make them look ridiculous but only insofar as historical reality allows you know I always go back to the truth and I think one of the most interesting things about Luxembourg's story is the complexity you know this valiant attempt to really change society to create radical social change and we know how badly that goes wrong like, you can read her book, she tells us we have the choice, socialism or barbarism, and then in subsequent events in Germany, we can see what barbarism meant. Mm -hmm. We can see how bad that was. And yet also, when we look at Stalin's actions, we can see that they had socialism and barbarism in Russia. Where does this leave us now? I mean, still, I think we need to always critically evaluate capitalism and what it is doing to our planet and what it is doing to our people. Mm -hmm. And we can use Luxembourg's writings to help us do that and also give us hope for the future. Mm -hmm. uh, there are uh, some studies, uh, there are papers that uh, the newly born um, mem culture with very short comics. Yeah. Very short oh, graphics. My son likes meme culture. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it is used by a continental philosophy. When the Marx becomes a um, actor in such memes, it is uh, uh, somehow disturbing to many people that uh, youngsters uh, have uh, uh, getting the knowledge of uh, the Marx theory, theory in such way. How can you describe this meme culture and uh, its uh, potential? In uh, yeah, I think meme culture is symptomatic of you know the fact that we like our information to be cut into very small chunks, very small pieces, mm -hmm. um, like Twitter as well. And the contrast between reading the 19th century revolutionary socialist theory, the fact that there's so many words, it's so long, it's so boring, so much of it. So in my work I was struggling between these two very, very different forms, like Luxembourg's writings, like there's so many words, it's like she was paid more for each word she writes. Like, mm -hmm. that's how many words there are, yeah. And then with meme culture, with, like, instant tweeting Instagram culture, the pressure is always to find these little, tiny, short sound bites. I manage in a few places. But, for example, I take, I take a, a quote from Luxembourg that I like, yeah? Capitalism is prepared to set the world on fire. That's not what she wrote. She wrote... German capitalism easily exports textiles locomotives to Turkey and does not collapse. Rather, it is prepared to set the world on fire in order to monopolize this trade to an even greater extent. Mm -hmm. That's not a meme. <laughs> so my job as the cartoonist is to take these historical moments and make them accessible to people. I mean, that's what's so good about the comics format. You don't feel like you're being educated. You don't feel like you're being taught something. You are being entertained, yet at the same time, I want all the complexity of these messages to be explained in a way which people can find easy. Yeah, Karl Marx memes are interesting, but then when I create Luxembourg as a hero, again, I, I'm making her be more like, like Karl Marx. He's symbolic. Mm -hmm. Just the picture of Marx is symbolic of a lot more than the actual reality of a man living in a house in London, always getting into debt. Mm -hmm. being helped by his friend who had a factory. Like, <laughs> that's who Karl Marx actually was. And that's why it's nice to create these historical stories where people can learn more about the reality mm -hmm. of the person in relation to others as well. Luxembourg has a quote, which I finished the book with. Um, you see, I've learned from history that one should not overestimate the impacts that one individual can have. And yeah, like... I want people to learn Luxembourg's story, but I don't want them to worship her like a god. Mm -hmm. It's about seeing the contradictions within people. That's where you can really learn from, mm -hmm. from what they were actually like. That's why she is a child, she is a lover, she is a fighter, uh, and, and, and so on. Yeah, I had to put her in being a lover. That mm -hmm. was fun. I've never had to been able to do a, a graphic novel with sex scenes in before. And I think it's really important that women make representations of sex because so often in comics, the women are the sex objects. They've got waist like this, breasts like this. They're dressed in un 
impractical shoes for running across rooftops. And like, this is the way that women are meant to be. It's no wonder so many women don't feel a connection with the graphic novel format. Mm -hmm. And then when you look at like good new graphic novels by women, about women, it's so different. And it, I think there's a huge market for women to read and write and create graphic novels that we're only just starting to see. Red Rose, and who's next? Uh, do you plan to make another novel? Oh, well, I thought I would definitely want to do another historical graphic novel, but then I went to Calais refugee camp, the, the jungle, mm -hmm. and, oh my God. So I created a, a, a website, you, you can link to it in your YouTube comments, yeah? Okay, yes. It's called Threads, and that's just a blog post that I made about the first trip that I made to the Calais refugee camp and then from that I've done a 176 page graphic novel about the situation in Calais with refugees. So that's called Threads, Threads from the Refugee Crisis and that's coming out uh, next month in the UK and I think there is a Korean edition as well very soon. Um, so that's next but I've already done that. <laughs> I'm definitely definitely interested in like I have a particular historical period and location where I'm sort of looking for a story and I also am doing a children's book mm -hmm. so yeah there's lots lots and also yeah I really want to do something about Donald Trump because the man is just a piece of dog shit on the shoe of humanity and you know I, I want to unpick some of that <laughs> okay we'll be waiting <laughs> And traditional, uh, how how you, how is your feeling from Ukraine? If uh, 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 where you've been before in uh, post-Soviet countries, how how your how the picture of the uh, architecture of the people and so on? Oh, I'm I'm really enjoying Ukraine. Uh, the architecture, everything's big, everything's <laughs> huge. Like like looking out of the train window, the people seem too small because the train tracks are bigger and the windows are bigger and the houses are bigger and the trees are bigger. I feel like I'm in the land of tiny people in giants. Um, so really like uh, it's been fun me meeting the Ukrainian people, very like warm and interesting and connected. Um, I, I mean, my only previous experience is uh, Moscow in like the early 1990s. So obviously it's all a different like situation. Um, it's scary seeing the rise of fascism right the way across Europe, and this has just been in two or three years. Everything's like turned on its head. Um, so seeing the it's seeing the the rise of far right politics in Ukraine, it's deeply worrying. And again, in France, Marine Le Pen lost the presidential election, but she should never have ever made it to the ticket that she should never have been a choice on the ballot paper. People should not have... I mean, I believe in democracy, but the left needs to make a concerted push to show people that there is an alternative to these emotional politics of fear and hatred. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to show people... Yeah, the neoliberal project is bankrupt, but the way to go is towards helping humanity, not stamping a boot in somebody else's face. How does it look as a picture at, in England from Ukraine? What BBC shows? What the picture? And if uh, the people even do know something f about the processes here? Um, all we really saw was that there was protest in Maidan and then people had tires and they were on fire. Okay. I think the political situation that underpinned that was not clearly explained to the UK people. And we're also here, oh, Ukrainian people want to be part of the EU. And that is presented as though, oh, that's good. It's a very simplistic representation. Oh, the EU is good and Russia is bad because Putin and bad. That's basically what the level mm -hmm. of the discourse. Now, examining the situation in Ukraine, I would question whether it is beneficial for Ukraine to be part of the EU. If you look at the situation of Greece, mm -hmm. the fact that their currency is part of the EU means that they have no ability to have their own national infrastructure. Like, it is owned by the EU and the Greek, 
Greek people are at the very, very bottom of the pile. Like, currencies are meant to be able to fluctuate in relation to each other because then you can even out the problems with, with different economies. I'm not an economist, but that's my quite simplistic um, take on the situation. I hope that the Ukrainian people can flourish you know, I think this country has so much potential and the people are, have so much to, to give and to do and I, and I really, really hope. It's also interesting because my work most recently is about refugees, it's about migration. And in Britain the pressure is, oh, we couldn't possibly let the migrants come here. It's about building bigger walls to keep people out. But the situation historically wasn't like that, like most of the population of Scotland and Ireland they both they went to other countries. They created new, new populations in 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 Australia and Canada and uh, and America. And here in Ukraine, it's a migrant population, but the other way, you're leaving, going to Poland. I think the situation with Ireland can have some parallels in that respect. And it's it's a hard situation. I want to see a more common understanding of the fact that the borders that keep the poor people in one country but allow the rich people and the money to flow around the globe. That's a kind of global apartheid. And we need to be looking at equality around the world and between nations. And I think one day, borders will be seen for the evil that they, that they can be, for that they are. Mm -hmm. So while it's great to meet the Ukrainian people and see the Ukrainian people having a sense of their own nation, I, I wouldn't ever think that people should lose that. I think the idea that the nation is something that you must build a fence around is very problematic, and I agree with Luxembourg on this respect. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. okay, cheers. Okay. And, uh...